here and I will zoom in in a moment. I just want to give you an overview of what we plan to do today. Today we will start with sharing repositories online. We want to share this guacamole recipe that we created yesterday. If you only joined today, it's not a problem. We, um, if you joined later or got stuck, uh, we have a way to get you started. I will show you in a moment. We will later discuss inspecting history. This will be incredibly useful for projects where you where you join a project that existed before you joined. And this is very common to we often when we start our PhD or postdoc or master thesis, we don't start from zero. Something we start with an existing code. And here we will teach you how to navigate. And then after the lunch break, if you are in a similar time zone, <clears throat> we will talk about undoing and recovering. We plan three exercises today, two exercises before the lunch break, one exercise after the lunch break. Okay. And just catching up here. I think we're all good. No good. questions right now. So do Super. we- Super, so now I'm going into the sharing repositories online and I also put that in in the notes. So if you follow this link, you land here. Okay. And now I can zoom in a bit. Yes, I got it. And first we want to create a context, explain what we plan to do. And then, so we will talk now for 10, 15 minutes. And then in 10, 15 minutes, we will give you the chance to, to try it out. So maybe let's first talk what, what are we trying to do here? Oh, we, Yesterday, we created commits and branches and merge commits, and they all stayed on the computer. They were in this directory called .git. And if, if, I, if you remove that directory .git, the git history of the project is gone. And, and maybe you ask yourself, well, what if the hard disk fails? What if somebody steals my laptop? And how can I collaborate with others across the web? And then the answer is that we can use the web as a, as a way to, to store our repository. And for this, we will learn how to use so-called remotes. Yeah. So to frame this, so when do you start pushing stuff to another server from your computer if you're starting a new project? And I can also answer this, but... Mm -hmm. I think we should both answer it. So uh, I start, um, these days often I do it very soon. I do it on the same day. I create a repository, I put it on the web because, because I have one computer at work, a different computer at home. So I want to be able to continue working and I like that it's on the web. The backup is then better than the thing that I have on my laptop. So I, I do that very soon. I also do that when when I uh, anticipate collaborating with somebody, because then we need we need to agree on a place where we have where we have our Git repository for collaboration. How about you? Yeah. So if it's something, well, I also try to do it as soon as possible because why not? If it's something that will be public eventually, if it's some random throwaway project I'm doing and I'm just get committing in order to keep it safe, I mean, maybe not. But if it's something that isn't going to be public and is very important, like for example, when I was writing my thesis, I would every day push my latest work to one of the university servers by SSH. So not on GitHub, not public, not anywhere outside of my control, but just I had another backup copy and I could do this every day. And that was yeah. quite good. Okay. As a question coming in, is GitHub used for sharing and synchronizing codes across the machines? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good question. So we will we will use GitHub, but GitHub is not the only place. It's it's an example for a number of similar um, services. Yeah. So there is GitHub, GitLab, there is Bitbucket. You can host sometimes universities have their own gitlab we in code refinery provide a gitlab service if you want to use it it's then 
it's situated in the, in the Nordics, so it sits, sits in Denmark. Yeah. Or, or as Richard indicated, you can even run your own server. So it doesn't have to be GitHub. We, we are not affiliated with GitHub in any way. I mean, it's good to know that behind GitHub is Microsoft. We demonstrate here GitHub because it is currently the most popular platform. So we think it's good for you if you know how it, how to interact with it, even if for your own projects you decide to, to use something else. Yeah. I mean, I used to teach things that were not the most common useful thing and people didn't care. So there's a reason we're teaching what people are most likely to do, even if yeah. um, GitHub as a monopoly isn't good. Is creating I a think private... the second question is also really good. Yeah, we should. Is creating a private Git repository on the web safe? I mean, it depends on where you put it. Do you trust GitHub? Well, it's probably good enough for something minor, but your organization probably doesn't trust GitHub for confidential data unless there's some other agreement. So that's just sort of how it is. Yeah. But yeah, um, should we go on so we don't get too far behind? We can yes. keep answering in the notes. Yep. So, in, and, and on this website, we list a couple of these alternatives. So they are listed here. Um, we need to, before we send you into the exercise and let you try it out, we need to, I want to mention two things. One, one thing is that if you got stuck yesterday, something didn't work, it, it just, you got stuck or you joined today, because in the rest of this episode, we assume that you have a repository. You can you can get started like this. Uh, no, wait a moment. Yes. Oh, good. I got confused for a moment. So we, we have a uh, we have something to get you started, which you can use as an as an example if if you don't have anything from yesterday. The other thing I want to clarify is that. No, actually two things I want to clarify. So we have, oh, there is this term remote. Remote will be a Git repository somewhere on the internet, in this case on GitHub. But tomorrow we will clarify it in depth. And also today we, we need to at least mention the terms pushing and pulling and cloning because we will, you will try it out in, in the exercise. And these are mechanisms to communicate changes between Git repositories. So what we will do is we have this Git repository on our laptop. We will create a Git repository in GitHub, and then we will push changes from the laptop to the internet. And you can then do the opposite, which is pulling, pulling updates. Okay. And this is some mechanism then to synchronize changes between repositories. But today we will keep it a little bit vague. Tomorrow we will give it understanding. We yeah. also need to talk about authentication. Mm -hmm. This was a fun project getting set up for this year, but okay. So, so go ahead. So that's uh, important because now that we will push changes, we will push our commits and branches to GitHub. We need to authenticate to GitHub. We need a way to authenticate to GitHub from the command line, from the terminal. So basically, there are GitHub two ways. knows who we are. Yeah, GitHub needs to know who we are, that we have the permissions to push changes to, to the repository, and there are two ways. And if you follow the install instructions, you have hopefully set up and tested one of the two ways. If you haven't or you got stuck, you can also try to fix this during the exercise. So the exercise will be 20 minutes, it will be enough time hopefully enough time to not only publishing the changes, but also maybe to do some troubleshooting with this authentication. And do, the two methods are SSH, the secure shell protocol, or the HTTPS protocol. Which one, if people are unsure, what, what do we recommend? Well, I'd say by now, either it's been set up in the install instructions or mm -hmm this is not going to work. So it was part of the course setup. So if you get here and neither of these work and then 
yeah, you're basically just not going to be able to do the push. So in that yeah. case, I'd recommend doing this as a demo read and look at the install instructions and then try to get one of them set up. So the next exercises we do won't depend on this anyhow. So you don't lose everything for today. This is just a single standalone example, right? That's right. So if it doesn't work, please don't give up. Don't leave the workshop. Um, in this case, I would scroll down and look at the screenshots because for all the steps, we have screenshots here. And the okay. later exercises today, we will not need it. But we already introduced this because we will need it tomorrow. Yeah. So for tomorrow's exercise, we will need this to work. But then you, if you realize that, well, that didn't work today, you still have a chance to set it up for tomorrow. So that's why we have it here. We have it here. Yes, exactly. OK, should we get going? Yes. Or what? Well, you need the background. So what's the concepts here? Yeah, and I think we will not explain in too much detail because the steps are there with the screenshots. Uh, I want to tell you what the goal is. So what you what you should try in the exercise session is following these steps, creating um, an empty repository on GitHub. And I want to highlight one thing that is often tricky is when you create the empty repository, it will ask you give it a name, you can give it a description. You can make it public or private. I recommend to make it public. You can later remove it again. The important thing here is that please do not check this at a readme. And please do not, in this case, select anything here. So no git ignore, no license. These is... are useful things for later, but in this case, we don't want it. And the reason we don't want it is that if you select it, it will already create a commit for you automatically. And the commit will, you will have a different history on GitHub than on your laptop, and then you will see some error messages. If I scroll down here and you see some error messages, so you will follow this, everything will be fine, but maybe, maybe things will not be fine. We have a troubleshooting section. So these two errors are really frequent, and then you find an explanation why that happened and how you can recover from it. If you follow the instructions, literally this error should not happen. Yeah. So that will be step number one of your exercise. Step number two, if you have time, then you can try to do the opposite. So the opposite of publishing a repository onto GitHub will be assuming that, okay, there is a repository on GitHub and we want to clone it, clone, basically make a copy of the entire repository from GitHub to get to, to the laptop. So then you can try this as well. So that will be the goal for the 20 minute exercise session. Yeah. Do, I, do we show any demos here? Or? So I recommend, well, I don't know. We, we are still well in time. We could show it and, uh, or we let people do it. And then when yeah. we are back, we, we rather answer questions and discuss. So how early are we? We are, at least according to my time, we are five minutes ahead of our time, four minutes. Okay. Maybe we can let people do it. Well, I guess we can do a demo before or a demo after. Yeah, let's see how it goes. Let's, let's, do, yeah. let's do a demo after if needed. Yeah. We will see what questions we are getting. Yeah. And then I recommend there. that we take exercise until 45 minutes okay. past the hour so that we give people a chance to maybe troubleshoot SSH, maybe troubleshoot some of these errors. Yeah. And please uh, continue asking questions. This is really great. Yeah. And then once we are back, we will do a Q&A and maybe demo. Yeah. There's a really, really good question we should answer first. So it's about, weren't we creating online Git repositories yesterday? And basically, so yesterday we made it on our own computer. And today we're linking that own copy with what's on GitHub. So Git itself doesn't need to send data to any network program. It can work only on your computer with absolutely no connections or sending anything to anyone else. And that's good. Like you don't want to, by using Git, always send it to some other service. So there's this very explicit step and you decide what gets shared and you decide what's only on your computer. 
Ah, uh, okay, but there is a good point here. So some people have done the exercise on GitHub yesterday instead of on their own computer. And that mm -hmm. means that in that case, you don't have the local copy. So you can't go linking it to GitHub now because it's already there. Yeah, that's cool. So people actually did that. I, I was wondering whether anybody really tried to create yeah. it on, on GitHub yesterday. Okay. That's great. In this case, you have it already on GitHub. Then okay. then you should focus on the cloning part. Okay. And is that down below? That's down on the page. Okay. You can also try to clone it and publish it as a different repository also on GitHub. Yeah. So that's interesting to hear. So then I think you have a bit, bit of free time for those who, who managed. Okay, so should we go now? Yeah, let's do exercise until 45 past the hour and I will, we will add the goals of the exercise. Okay, great. So off to the notes and see you in a bit. Bye. Bye. Hello, we should be back. Okay, sorry for a bit of delay. But yeah, so I propose we go to the a quick demo and then we look at some questions. So Radovan of the demo. Uh, I will switch to my screen. Great, let's do that and I will guide you through it uh, if I can see it. Wait, that is... Ken... Okay, I have to fix something here. Sorry, let's do questions first. Um, I, can you share HackMD? Yep. Something. So, one, uh, so first of all, we, we will try something new here. We wanted to, we will like put some questions in bold that we want to discuss on stream. Um, so thanks a lot for the questions. This is a really good one, uh, question 22. Uh, what if I accidentally cloned the repository into the wrong folder? Can we move it somehow? And yes, you can move it because Git uh, doesn't store absolute absolute paths to your directory. So you can you can rename the directory, you can move it somewhere else on your hard drive, and it will still work. This the same thing applies if you create a repository on your laptop and then you change your mind and think well i wanted it somewhere else you can move it somewhere else and all the git part will still work because the the dot git directory it works relatively to to the files and it doesn't mind where on the hard drive it is okay i think i'm ready that sounds great well just between us, where can I see your screen then? <laughs> we have a, a bit of an interesting setup here. Ah. But I can also guide you probably just by memory. Okay. Uh, sorry, oh, let's see. Issues here. Okay, preview should be back. Okay, so here we are on my screen. Uh, yep, I've got all this stuff. So we are going to publish repository from laptop to GitHub. So first, yeah. I'll make the repository on GitHub. So I have it mm -hmm. open here. I make that small. I do new new repository. Mm -hmm. I make it under my. Uh, okay, recipe exist. I'll call it recipe two. Mm -hmm. I make it public, and I make sure these are not checked. That's the cause of some of the error messages we saw in the notes. So I create yeah, a repository. And we don't check any of these because we want to have a pristine, empty... At this moment, we don't want to have any commits in there because we have all the commits already on our uh, computer. Mm -hmm. And now that you created it, you, you see this page which says, well, there's nothing there yet, but there are these different ways on how you can yeah. put commits in here and we will... We will follow the one which is push an existing repository because that's the, that's our situation currently. We have an existing repository on the in your computer mm -hmm. from yesterday. 
Uh, someone says we don't hear the streaming. Uh, it sure sounds mm. like it should be there. I'll go on unless there's other confirmations about not hearing. Um, okay. So here I am. So first I need to figure out where I am. So I know I'm not in the recipe repository, so I'll change to it. Uh, wait. So I'm in the recipe. If I list, yeah, I see the same stuff from yesterday. Um, I will do git status. I'm on branch main commit working tree clean. Sounds good. Maybe I should do a git graph. Maybe yeah, let's not. do a git graph. Why not? Just a quick recap. Okay, so this looks like we what have I had. We a couple of comments in there. Looks good. Good. Okay, so and now I copy these things. And now you so, want to copy these commands. Yeah. So for top. So first, this makes a remote. Yeah. And, and what is a remote? So there we got lots of questions about what what the remote is. Remote is a it's a it's a placeholder for yeah. a web address. So this is where the repository will be. Yeah. It's basically saying this name is this location. So just mm -hmm. adding the remote doesn't do anything. Should I run this? So I'll, it says yeah. to, so I'll do it. It's renaming the current branch to main. And then we do this. Mm -hmm. And this is the key part here. This says we're pushing the U means make it the upstream branch. Let's ignore that for now and copy. Origin means we're pushing to origin and main means we are pushing main. And yeah. I will push so the, enter. The two important parts here are what are we pushing? We push the main branch and the main branch only. Where do we push to? We push to origin. Where is origin? Origin is in this case at git at github.com, etc. etc. And now if I refresh this page, what do you know? It's here. And if I scroll down, this looks like something I wrote yesterday. I see ingredients. Hey, cilantro to taste. That's exactly what I wrote yesterday. Great. If and now you can try commits, one more thing. You can I see what go to. Happened. OK, so what's the extra thing? Um, navigate to on GitHub. Navigate to settings, oh. insight. No, sorry, not settings. Insights. So uh, insights and network. Yes. Okay. And here's the equivalent of Git graph. So it does. And then one question somebody had was that well, where are all the other branches? Mm -hmm. But do we have other branches locally? Maybe we don't have anymore. So actually, here I did see them. So the thing is, we when we did this push command, which is here, we only told it to push the main branch, so the other branches aren't there. So you have a lot of control over what gets pushed and doesn't push. OK. Um, there's a still a lot of good questions coming in, but should we go to the break and answer them during the break and maybe revisit some when we're back? This is what we will do. OK. So break until we will take a break until five minutes after the hour. We will look at the questions here. And then once we are back, we plan our next steps. Yes. OK, sounds good. See you after the break. See you in a bit. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Hello. Hello. OK, so yeah, what do we do now? Uh, was I going to do a demo? And then we. Yeah, I think it's good if we. So we got. So first of all, let's maybe let's take a breather. We got lots of questions, um, and one might get again the impression that again we are too fast, but many of these things will come back tomorrow. Today was we did this basically. It was like a sneaky way for us to test that you have the connection set up <laughs> and are ready for to, tomorrow. But still, one something we want to show, and that is. A uh, question also that came a couple of times. Why do we only see the main branch on GitHub, but if I have all the other branches on my computer, how come? So maybe you could show that. 
why is that so and how can I see all the other branches as well? Yeah. So with that, am I going back to my screen and let's yes. just... So, okay, to me. Yes, there am I. So we see the network graph and clearly there is only main there. But on my computer, we clearly see the branches. So what if we push one of these other branches? Will it appear on GitHub? Shall we try? Yeah, that's right. So I still we'll see these two. the git push command here. I'll run git push or origin uh, dislike cilantro. So I push enter. Mm -hmm. A bunch of stuff comes. And I'm going to refresh this page. And what do you know? There's dislike cilantro there. And actually, we noticed that commit was already there because it was already part of main's history because it was merged. It just wasn't labeled with dislike cilantro. So hopefully this really shows how it's sort of the same history everywhere. But these branches are these pointers into the history. Yeah, and it's possible to also push all branches in one go if you wanted to. So there is git push origin is it all? dash dash all, you push all of them. But how do you work, Richard? Do you typically push one branch at a time or all of them in one go? Usually I would just be pushing what's needed and yeah, I push here. things and make it a pull request if it's ready for other people to see. Yeah. Okay, more so questions. Again, more about this tomorrow. There were lots of questions about what is a remote, um, how does it, all of this work, what is origin, can it have a different name, but we will spend tomorrow three and a half hours on, on these questions. So today it was just a preview. Yeah. Okay. So I recommend that we, we now kind of close this part and move on to the next episode okay. where we again work locally. Are you sharing the screen? For me, I can uh, share. So here we are. We're going to inspecting history. Actually, if do you have it open? You can share if you're talking. Yeah, happy to. Okay. And let me also put it on the notes so that everybody knows where we are. So we will now be moving on to inspecting history. This is this will be. Really, 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 really important episode. We will teach you a couple of tools that might save you a lot of time. They have saved me a lot of time in the past. Our plan is that we demonstrate, let me show, let me check my schedule here. We will demonstrate a few things here to you, and then we will give you the chance to test them out in an exercise session. Just checking my timing. Yeah, so like 10 more minutes we will demonstrate and then we will send you to another exercise session. First thing we want to all make sure is that now we don't want to be anymore in the recipe repository we will now leave the recipe, the guacamole recipe behind. We want to, in, in your computer, you want to navigate out and maybe create a new a new directory and in there we will do these, uh, this next, next exercise. And we want to show you a couple of tools that you will use this in the exercise. And these tools you can explore them either in the command line again, or you can explore them directly on GitHub. And we wish we had one more tab here for GitLab. So in future, we will have more tabs here because the same things work on, on all of these services. And the first thing I want to show you just for fun, it's a, as a warm up, there is this really fun Git history browser. If you open this address, and you can use it with any repository, any public repository on GitHub. So you can you could replace you could replace this by your username and this by another 
uh, repository. And then if I now use my left and right keyboard arrow keys, I can navigate through the history. It's kind of fun to see how, so this is some readme file in some other people's project. We can, we can here see how, how this file changed over time. It's a fun way of visualizing the Git history of a project and of a file. But this was just for fun. Now, three tools that we want to show you. And I wonder, do you, Richard, do you want to demonstrate them? Should I guide you through them or? Yeah, I can demonstrate. So. Good. Uh, I'll switch back to my screen. Yep. So here I am on Inspector History. What's our starting point? Do we search for patterns? Yes, so scroll down a little bit. Then now for everybody, you don't have to type along. You can watch. So I recommend for the next 10 minutes, watch what we do. You can then try this out in the exercise session. So let's watch what Richard will do yeah. and I will guide Richard through it. And the first tool is we want to be able to search for a certain text pattern in the entire Git repository. Mm -hmm. And for this, we, we will clone an existing repository. It's a Python project. It's a project called Network X. It's a, it's a relatively big open source project. And we use it as, a, as an example because it's a project we don't know yet. And we can imagine we just joined the project. We just joined the research group. We need to find our way in a, in a Git repository. Yeah. Sometimes you need to find a way in your Git repository that you, that you wrote a few months ago and you don't remember anymore. And we can demonstrate this. So Richard, you can clone the repository. Now we already have a bit of an idea what cloning means. It means making a copy from, yeah. from a remote towards your laptop. So before cloning, I want to make sure I clone in the right place. So yeah. here it's a bit small, but it says the directory I'm in, home archidarst recipe. So first I'll do the CD command to move to my general home directory. So CD with no arguments takes you to your home base. And then I will CD to a place I have called Git, which is where I tend to clone all of my things. But you can clone wherever you'd like, but I guess don't clone inside of the recipe repository. Hmm. So first I'll run the git clone command. Yeah. I will copy and paste. And it should make a new directory right here called network X. Hmm. We receive objects. So here we are, it basically copies yeah. all the commits through the network, all the commits, all the branches, yeah. the entire repository. Yeah. So this is actually a pretty big repository. It's not huge on the global scale, but yeah. it's taken a little bit of time. And once we have the repository, we will then go in okay. and we will Okay. Uh, we will show you this command called git grab, which is so incredibly useful. If you, if you know the grab command, if you are familiar with the grab command from working in the terminal, then this will be very familiar. What this will do is we can search the entire repository for a certain text or a text pattern. In this case, we maybe you want to search for, for the text called fix me. The minus I makes it case insensitive. So I'll run this. Yeah. And how can this be useful? This is useful if you, if you know that somewhere in the project, there is something called a text with a certain text, but you are not sure where in the project. And yeah. this will list all the files where this appears. So basically, if I was ever bored, I could go look at these and know to do something about it. But more practically speaking, I'll often use this. So there's some other project I'm using and I want to use some function in it. And I wonder where is this function defined? I'll clone it and I'll do git grep and figure out and it lets me sort of navigate new codes really easily to figure out where stuff is and how it all works together. Okay, is there something yeah. next? So here I just want to mention that 
it is possible to search for things also directly on the web, but we will now skip it. You can have a look. Okay. Um, so Git grep is really useful. We will use it later in the exercise. Yeah. Um, the next example, inspecting individual commits. Uh, okay. Scroll down a little bit. So. And this is um, this is a bit of a re recap. We have maybe seen this command already yesterday, but Git show on a specific commit shows you what happened in that commit, what was the change, and what was the metadata. And you can try that on that particular commit. So this is a commit that exists in that repository. Yeah. And I'll give a demonstration. So this whole thing is the commit ID, but I can use the first few characters, and it works. So here we see something from 2020, fixed return values when drawing empty edges and nodes. That was the commit message. And if I scroll down, I see the diff and see what happened. Yeah. So that will be okay. useful as well. And then let's go down a little bit more, one more tool. And this is also a bit of a recap. We have briefly highlighted it yesterday. Is this annotation feature and we can annotate in the browser or in the command line and annotating a Git annotating a file means that we will see the we will see the code and it it doesn't have to be python code here it's only python because the example is python this works with any text code yeah. if you now press enter let's see how this will look with a big font let's make it a bit just some if this doesn't fit into our screen share we can also show that on the in the browser okay. instead but the idea is that for on the right side, for each line of this project, we can go to the left and see when was this line modified last, which commit, which person, which timestamp. This is really useful if you find a bug or a problem and you want to know since when was it there. Yeah. It's also useful if you see something in the code you don't really understand, you want to know who can I ask about it. Maybe a good person to ask about it is to, if you then go left and find out who modified it last, maybe that person knows something about it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. Great. So you can also try that in a browser. We will skip, but we will let people try it out. And do we have anything more? Let me see. Inspecting code in past. Oh, yeah, that's really useful too. And that is, that is a useful recipe if you want to look at how was this project few months ago mm -hmm. and the recommended mechanism to do that is that to create a branch but the branch doesn't have to oh yesterday we learned how to create branches now like where we are now at, at head but we can create branches in the past you can create a branch pointing at at a commit in the past and that's the recommended mechanism to have a look at your project how it was in the past create a branch, we go to the branch, we switch to it, we have a look, and then we can switch back to main, back into future. Okay. So I here you, so what, what's going on in the command? Because I think yesterday we maybe didn't uh, explain what is this git switch create doing? Uh, okay. So this is making a new branch called older code starting at this particular point. And the create part will so it will create it and switch to it in one ah, go. It, okay, right, because if we were just creating but not switching, we'd use git yeah. branch. Okay, yes. So, okay, I'll do this. Should I run git status? On yes, branch, so always good to run git status. Commit, yeah, okay. Uh, so we can look at the code. And let's do, uh, how can we find out where we are now, let's do maybe a git log, just to sh just to see that we are in the past somewhere. So we see the most recent commit is 2016. Is from 2016. Okay. So yeah. now when we do git log, we see the history from 2016 to towards the past. Mm -hmm. If we want, if we want to go back into future, back to back to main, it would be git switch main. Okay, and should I finish the example by deleting the old branch? 
Perfect. Okay. And now we, this was a quick excursion, but we want to give you 20 minutes to, let me double check, is it really 20 minutes? Should be maybe more. No, it was meant to be 30 minutes. Okay. Uh, we want to give you 30 minutes to practice these. There is on that page. All right, let's take a step back. Uh, we want to give you 30 minutes, but let me first explain what we want from you. So there is this green box history one exercise. What do we want to do there? Uh, in this exercise, you will, you will clone this network X project. We don't know the project, but there's actually an advantage in this exercise. Uh, we will switch to a particular version of it. So you follow these three commands. Uh, you Then you have it on your computer. Make sure that you have stepped out of the recipe from yesterday. And in this project that we don't know, we want to do a bit of archaeology. So Sherlock Holmes had on, we want to you have a couple of tasks, so task one, two, three, four, five. There is also a solution. Mm -hmm. You want to find out a particular part in the code, logic error in degree correlation. We imagine that we see this error on the screen and we want to know where in the code is it. We, you want to find out when was this line modified or edit? What was the actual commit that edit this line? And then have a look at that particular commit. And then try to bring your project back to a state when that commit was created and then to a state just before that commit was created. And this will be a really useful toolbox when navigating through your projects. So there is a solution. For those of you who have time for more or want to do more, below there is an optional exercise which we didn't explain and we will not explain right now, which so, is git bisect. It's also an interesting command and you can experiment with that too, optionally. And after the exercise, we'll be back. And then we can summarize what we just learned. Okay. And if this doesn't work, is that a problem for what we do next? If the no, what means this? The like if if the exercises don't work, is that a problem for after lunch? No, it's not a problem because uh, after lunch we will do something different. So even if you get stuck here, nothing worked, not an issue. I would then go through the solution, try to retrace it. Also, if you get stuck, I would I would maybe scroll up and try to experiment with some of these commands that we showed. And you can try them on your own project. You can try them on the recipe uh, project as well. So that will be the goal. Exercise until, I would say we should really take the time until 55. Okay. Yes. And then we will be back, summarize, and then we will take a longer break. Yes. Okay. See you all then. See you all then. Bye. Good luck. And we are back from the exercise session and we have five minutes left. In these five minutes, we wanted to use the time to clarify some of the questions that came in. I hope you had fun. If it was too much for 30 minutes, there is a solution and you can try that step by step later. Uh, one thing that is really useful for us here in this exercise box, if you let us know how things are going, because we don't really know, we don't really see you. And this is, it's a really good feedback for us if there is a problem. You can also let us know if things are going well, so it doesn't have to be a problem always. Yeah, yeah we only hear things that go wrong and not goes right, so we'd like to hear the good stuff too. Okay. Yeah. So let us know how it's going. Be honest there. This really helps us a lot. Okay, what should we highlight here in the last five minutes? Yeah, let's see. 
one thing I wanted to remind people, because we added it here during the exercise, is that if I scroll up in the document, on top you can find the link to the GI cheat sheet that Richard created. It's really nice. It has a summary of all the commands, and then as we go along, what Richard does, it's circling around the commands that we have covered. And then there are some commands that we will not cover. So that's a nice thing to maybe print out or have have somewhere close by. There was a lot happening here in this um, in the exercise, but we we hope that the toolbox there is really useful for you to navigate in your repository in other people's repositories. Some of the questions that came up. Uh, one question that came up was about git show, how come git show still works even even if I'm if I move myself to the past. A git show will work with um, any commit in the repository. It doesn't matter where it, where it is, if it's in the past or in the future and on which branch. So that can be maybe a little bit surprising. One question we wanted to highlight. Which one was it, Richard? We had uh, 57. 57. After inspecting code before the mistake, it was done and something. How do we continue working? Uh, yes, so what was the, the point of this creating a branch in the past was to have a way of traveling back in time looking at the project as it was a few months ago, having a look, maybe running it, and then easily go back to the present. So being able to navigate back to main. So in this case, we didn't want to really create new commits. We didn't want to merge this into main. In fact, it is already part of main because it's part of, it was part of main history. So it was just for the sake of inspecting and then in this case, maybe not even correcting manually, but it is a good question. What if, what if we go into the past and we find out that, oh, we created, we, we created a mistake in the past. Where should we correct it? How should we correct it? And I think we will return to that after the break, because after the break, we will yeah. create a couple of typical problems and we will learn how to recover. How do we undo changes? How do we undo commits? How do we undo mistakes? And this will be one of them. So as a preview, it would be one thing one could use is git revert. If the, if the mistake happened a long time in the past, I would probably, yeah, it depends. Yeah. I would probably Maybe. apply it uh, yeah. in the present. Yeah. I might try to restore the old version bit by bit and see what works. But if it's really old, I might expect I have to do some manual fixing up there. Mm -hmm. But it's much easier when I can see the two versions side by side compared to having no idea what it was before. Yeah. Okay, let's see. There is also this question, which I'm pretty sure we don't have time, but it's a very good question. I wish I could show it. How can we show that? We might have an example from a previous instance we can link. We can link the old video. Because we went through it in in previous workshops that we really then yeah. demonstrate this step by step. And I think we have videos on that. So let's link to this. Yeah. It's a, it's a very useful command that we now kept only optional. Um, yeah. Let's find there was, the there was some, Yeah, let's do that. We will link to it. Uh, there were questions about what is restore, what is reset, what is revert later today. Uh, question 60, I think that's interesting too, is that we can search not only through the present Git repository, through all the files, it's actually also possible to search through commit changes. 
So this is the git log dash s. Anything else we should highlight before we take a break? Maybe I'll just scroll up here. Have you given an exciting enough preview of what we're doing after the break? So we will sort of like this archaeology go through some semi-advanced but quite useful things that you might not have seen before. And then at the very end, we'll sort of do a very big, broad, general Q&A and talk about like practically what do we do, what do we recommend you do, what's good, what's not good, and so on. And that will be an important session on how much Git is necessary, because here we are throwing all these commands at you, but then the question is, all right, where should, where should we start? And how, should, how can we progress? Uh, what is a good starting point? Yeah. What is good enough? How much is necessary? And once I'm comfortable with these things, what should I do next? And uh, this will nicely uh, round up these two days of uh, Git before we move on to collaboration tomorrow. Yeah. So we hope to see you in one hour. Okay. Back here on stream. Have a nice break. See you. Bye. See you then. Hello. We're back. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. So, um, how was your lunch? Yeah, for me, it was good. It was quick, but good. I ran across the campus. It's very windy, but it's sunny. How about you? <laughs> nice. Yeah, I just had some leftover from last night here and then rested some. I guess I can show this cheat sheet. Um, this is now also linked in the notes, but here I've been circling the stuff we've done today in red. And if you go to the Code Refinery homepage, I think you would see this in the Mastodon feed for what we've done. Mm -hmm. And it's nicely sorting by each half day we're doing one section or so, or a couple sections. Okay. But now nice. to undoing. And before that, an important question. Is there any chance we will see a cat going past the stream today? It's still sleeping there, but okay. there's a chance. It's about time for it to start waking up and getting active. Nice. Looking forward. OK. So we yes. have one, one and a half hours left. Hopefully, we see the cat. In this, what are we going to do? In the one and a half hours, we will first talk about undoing and recovering from typical mistakes or situations. So we will create some of these situations. We will learn how to recover and we will also give you the chance to experiment a bit. So there will be one more exercise session, 20 minutes. Um, after the undoing and recovering episode, we will then go to more of a big picture summary, how much Git is necessary, where to start, how to progress, and as soon as you get comfortable to certain features, what to do next. So there will be like a nice mm -hmm. summary episode. I can also say that tomorrow we will do collaboration. You have hopefully received an email from me yesterday inviting you that even if you participate as an individual learner, you can still join the collaborative exercise. In the email, you find instructions how. If you didn't get the email or it wasn't clear, ask on the on the notes. Um, I will I will process these things in the this afternoon. So this afternoon you will get a notification and you will get added to these exercise repositories. So I will do that then. Yeah. Okay. So undoing recovering. Do let's let's talk about undoing recovering. Here we go. Am I sharing screen? Uh, I will yes. send it to you. There we are with you. Yes. So why do we, do we undo and recover? Like what's the big picture we're going to be able to do now? The big picture is to not panic because things will happen or uh, creating commits on the wrong branch or trying something out and realizing, well, that was not good. Let's go back or locally creating a commit, but then realizing that, oh, that com commit is incomplete. And we will learn how to fix these things because that happens every day, every week, and we will see it's not a problem. We we don't have to delete everything and start again. 
we can recover from almost everything. So that's the big picture. Yeah. The picture is to get, to be confident to work with Git and not be afraid of uh, mistakes, which will happen. Okay. In the document, we link to the to the episodes, so we'll be roughly following this. So now, not inspecting history, we are now in undoing and recovering. We are in here. We will first show you some of these things here live as a demo, and I recommend that you sit back, relax, and watch us do some mistakes. And then in in the exercise session, you will find again there are four green boxes: undoing one, undoing two, undoing three, undoing four. And then you, the goal will be that you select one of the four, or you can try to do all four of them to to test this out. And if you if you are worried on maybe you don't have a repository yet, maybe you joined just now, just today, you can also uh, clone this repository and then we all have the same starting point. And this is also what we will do here. So Richard in a moment will take over the screen, will clone this repository. Cloning means making a copy of it. And then inside we will give it a new name just to not have any collision. We will call it recipe recovery, but it is still our guacamole recipe. And then we will go in there and we will explore a couple of commands. In the meantime, please keep the questions coming uh, on one of my windows. I'm looking at those. Um, so Richard, are you ready to yes. take over the screen and I will guide you towards Let's go. some of these commands? So here we are. Let's get stuff arranged nicely. OK. Good. So Just um, looking at my plan. where do I start? Do I start by getting the repo? Yeah, let's start by that. Yeah. You can take that from the collaborative document. Yes. So we have two steps in there. And I'll also paste it to Twitch in case anyone is not registered and watching. Mm -hmm. OK, so I want to clone it in the right place. So I again do the cd command to go to my home directory. I change to my git place, and then I will run the clone command. That sounds good. So anytime I wonder where's my stuff, I usually know it's in the uh, git folder. Mm -hmm. OK. There we go, and now I cd to cd to recipe recovery. Good. Okay. And in there, and let's do a git graph to see what what do we even have in this repository. Okay, so I see origin main these branches before the merge, but yeah. yeah. Okay, I guess we focus on main for now. Good. Okay. So let's go out. Let's do also an ls to see what, what files do we have. As a reminder, we, we should yes. have three files in here. Ingredients, instructions, readme. Yeah. And I think the first command that we want to show you is restoring. So git restore. And that is useful if you make a modification. Well, let's make a modification to ingredients, but a modification that we, that we don't like. Okay. Or we, we will later realize we don't like it. Mm -hmm. So what should I do? Let's add something that doesn't make sense to a guacamole. Uh, so I'm wondering if I should add zero chili or 10 chili for something that doesn't make sense. I think zero chili doesn't make sense. OK, yeah. So but it's just my feeling chili. because I really like chilies. Uh, I exit, save, enter. Mm -hmm. OK, it's done. Should we get status and get diff? Get status and get diff, exactly. So yeah, it shows that it's been changed. Get diff. OK, there is no chilies. So what do I do? So do we now decide we don't like it? And what I wanted to show now is that uh, we have this modification, but I we don't like it. We want to go back to the last committed state. And if you look above the modified, Git is already giving us a hint on what to do. 
Okay. So I can either stage it or I can git restore it. And git restore is what we want to try now. And git restore will it will throw away this modification. Okay. This modification will be gone and we'll we'll go back to just how it was before. So this is a good command if you want to throw away modifications that have not been staged or committed. Should I try it? Uh, before you try it, just a little warning that once you, once you hit, enter, hit enter, that modification is gone. There is no way to get it back because we haven't we haven't, uh, yeah, we haven't committed it anymore. and we haven't staged it. Yeah. It's not saved. Yeah, that's a good thing to know. Okay. So... Enter and let's forget about that change and we are back to one chili. Yeah, okay. And should I get status? Mm -hmm. Working tree clean. Okay. So what should we do? Should we try the restore dash p option or one of the other things? Yeah, why not? Let's. Okay. So I'll do the Let's same thing again. Huh. I push tab, which auto completed these ingredients list. I will, well, change that to make it a hundred chilies this time. Hopefully that's acknowledged to be too much. Okay, get status. Okay, so I'll get restore dash p ingredients. Okay, I will push enter and it shows me, okay, this looks like a diff. So minus one chili plus a hundred chilies. So now I can push Y to say, yes, I want this to go away. Or I can push N and say, leave it there. So I will push yeah. Y. And now get status shows it's gone. And this is what I use often. Like I'll do a bunch of changes, like, okay, I need to remove some. So I almost always do git restore dash P so I know exactly what I'm getting rid of and approve each one individually. Okay. So that's a nice option. Um, it, it allows you to restore things more selectively. In a very similar way, you can also use this to commit changes more selectively. Mm, the dash P option. So git commit dash P. Yes. And I'm also getting the feedback that we are going a little bit fast. Mm -hmm. uh, as a reminder, I, you don't have to type along right now. You will have get enough time to explore right. these commands in an exercise session. I think now the best thing is to watch and the goal here is not to remember the commands. We have the cheat sheet. We have the material we can study later. It's more to see what is possible. Yeah. Okay. Should we show reverting commits? Let's show that. That's also really useful. It's also really safe. And we'll explain why. And here we will make something that we will regret, but we will actually commit it. Okay. So, so let's make a commit that we want to later undo. Should we add too much salt this time? That's a good plan. Let's try, let's be more reasonable, five uh, teaspoon salt. Exit, save, enter, yes, get status. Okay, and you want me to commit this? Yes, so maybe let's commit the change. Should I demonstrate git commit dash p? That's a good good opportunity for that. P. So I'll go like this. And it says, do I want to commit this? I push the Y key and enter. Yes, I give a message. And I'll call this try more salt and exit and save. Okay, should I do git status? Yeah, that's as expected. Git status and also oh, git log one line. We want to see that we really got that commit. Yes, there we go. So we've done the commit. So do we revert it now? And now we want to revert it. Okay. So we want to undo the commit. And for this, we can use the command git revert. Okay. So I'm copying this hash. And I paste it. And should I 
do it? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's letting me type a message here. Git revert, try more salt. Should I explain why? Yes, why do we, why do we ask for a new commit message? I guess, well, it is actually a new commit here and it needs some sort of message. And I guess it gives us an opportunity to, mm -hmm. um, yeah. well, explain why. So I will exit and save. Yes. And we get asked for, we get the opportunity to edit a commit message because as we will see in a moment, when we do another git log one line, the revert didn't remove that commit. It created a new commit that applied the opposite of the one commit that we reverted. We did not change the history. We, add, we added one additional commit. And this is why I call this a safe operation. Yeah, so we can't go back if you want to, or if we think in a day, okay, what did I try back then? I can see. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it is at somewhere earlier, somebody asked, well, what if I merged? And then later I realized I didn't want to merge. You can also revert merge commits. Mm -hmm. And again, it will create a new commit that does the, applies the opposite of the commit that we uh, wanted to revert. Mm -hmm. So people can practice that. Um, Do we go to the exercises now? I think, I think for the rest, we should let learners explore. So there is more on this page and I recommend that if you're in a group or if you're on your own, pick the, pick those exercises that look, that sound the most interesting to you. You can then try uh, restore, revert. You can also try reset and you will see what that does. Um, before that, I also wanted to raise one question from the document. How do we, we showed this minus P, how do we select in which order we review them. Uh -huh. uh, Git will ask you, you can limit it to certain files, but it will ask you change by change. And then you say, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, yes. It's a really nice way of, if you have lots of modifications in your working tree and you want to selectively do something, that's a nice option, but it's a little bit more advanced. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. I think it's time for an exercise session. Try this out. Uh, for how long? There, 20 minutes. So originally we have planned actually 25. Let me compare oh. my plan here. Yeah, I would say 25 minutes. Yeah, okay. So that would mean until uh, 42. Okay. Yes. Sounds good. And then, then we can be back and then we can do a debrief or maybe we can discuss some of the things that were problematic and yeah, looking forward to that. Have fun with the exercise. Keep the questions coming. Good luck. Yes. Sounds good. See you. Bye. Good. And we are back from the exercise. Welcome back. I wonder how it is going, but we didn't ask you that, oh. but you can still let us know whether this was enough time, too much time. Um, thanks for the questions. We wanted to now use 10 minutes or so to discuss some of these questions. We will then, then take a break. And after the break, we will try to have a kind of a round table Q and A where we uh, discuss how much Git is really necessary, where to start, how to progress. What are the questions that we would like to lift up? I have noted few. Uh, one, one really good question. It's it came up a little bit earlier. Was now that we have several Git repositories on our hard drive, uh, how to organize them? Should we all collect them under? one directory, like one directory called Git or Git repositories, or how, how do you organize your project, Richard? So one thing I learned is that flatter is better. Otherwise I lose track of things. Like I don't want to have a directory for work stuff and then in there a directory for 
project one and then in there a directory for code with several things in it and a separate thing with data and then several repositories deep in there but flatter is better but i think it would make sense to perhaps separate personal stuff from work stuff something like that yeah um but yeah, I can add I guess, two more tips. One is, uh, oh, go ahead. I guess you've seen that I have basically on all my computers in my home directory, something called Git, and in there is where I clone everything. And that's basically what I've been using for most of my active work almost all the time. And even if I don't know if I'll be pushing it, I'll make the project in there, make the Git repo, and then push it if needed. If not, well, I have the archive and history locally. And what about you? So, yeah, so my, my hard drive looks, I think, less organized than your hard drive, and I will not show everybody how, how <laughs> not so organized my hard drive looks. But one good news is that if you change your mind and you suddenly want to reorganize your hard disk, you can move the repositories and it will all still work. Mm. You don't have to clone again. Right. Uh, you can move them around. Uh, the one thing that we should all remember, however, it's not a good idea to put repositories under each other. Mm -hmm. It is possible to nest repositories, but there is there are different tools for this. But it's not a good idea to put one Git repository as a subdirectory to another Git repository. Because, because when you run Git commands, it goes, it finds the closest .git and it will not see anything else. So that's the tip I can give. We have a couple of more really good questions. And one is uh, question number 79. We have in the exercise, we have shown a git commit amend to edit text in the previous commit message. Or does it also revert to previous changes like with git revert? Hmm. That's a great question. So the amending, we can use it to change a commit message. You can also use it for an amendment. So if you forget, forgot to add a file, you can also add something to the commit. It doesn't have to be the commit message. Yeah. I guess I'd look at it as, so if you add some stuff, so you use git add, mm -hmm. and then you do git commit dash amend, double dash amend, yeah. it will add whatever you've, it'll, take whatever you've added and combine it with the previous commit yeah. and let you edit the message of the previous commit. Yeah. So you can't use it to only edit the message or you can use it to only add stuff, but it offers mm -hmm. you the chance to do both. Yeah. However, it will modify the hash. It will modify the identifier. So when you experiment with git commit amend, have a look. How was the hash before I did that? And how was it after? You will see it's different. And in fact, what Git does, what Git really does, is it replaces your commit with a new commit. So it actually doesn't modify the old commit. The old commit is still somewhere there, right. but it, it yeah. replaces it with a new commit and moves the branch to your new commit. Yeah. You can still recover the old commit. We didn't show how, but it's still possible. It's still not immediately deleted. Uh, something I also wanted to discuss is uh, somewhere somebody asked how to do something a little bit more advanced. And there, one trick that I use a lot, and I thought it would be good to share here, is that before, if I'm not sure about what the command will do, like I learned there was revert, reset, soft reset, hard reset, I don't remember anymore, I'm a bit uncertain, I don't want to remove my PhD thesis. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not sure what, what will happen, what I like to do personally, is I always first create a new branch. Mm -hmm. The branch doesn't cost anything, it doesn't take up any space. Yeah. And if I mess up, and, and I ended up with something very different than I expected, I, I can always go back to that branch. Yeah, that's I think I can recommend that to many people. Yeah. And I when mean, to oh, go ahead. And I mean, really, we can talk a lot about how to make your history look perfect. But in the end, 
no one's really going to go back and look at it. And if they do, it's to find some old thing that happened. And for that, a dirty history is better because it's more likely to contain what's missing. So I'd say if in doubt, just commit and go on, revert, whatever. It's not... So I, I've, I've wasted a lot of time trying to make my git commit history look perfect. And while it was interesting at the time, I don't really have much to show for it. So don't, 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 whatever you do, don't let our talks of making stuff look good get in the way of just doing something. Correct. So just before, just because we show here how to fix a typo in a commit message doesn't mean that we should do that to every commit message. It's not a problem. I also remember that at the beginning when I put things on GitHub, I was kind of anxiously waiting until people come and start criticizing or doing something with it, but actually that doesn't happen. So it's really okay. Too many commits better than too few commits, but more about that in our discussion in a moment. Any other question that we should raise here before we go into the break? There was one question about when to, so now we know about revert. It doesn't change the history. We know that there is reset, super powerful, but it can change the history. So when is when should we prefer the one? When should we prefer the other? Should we change history? Should we not change history? And this goes a bit back to what Richard just said that, well, if we want really beautiful history and everything should look very organized, then reset can do all of this. Uh, but very often it doesn't matter. The one place where it matters is that if somebody accidentally commits something which should should not be in the hist in the repository, for instance, a password or some sensitive information, uh, then removing it will not be enough. Reverting it will not be enough because all of this creates new commits, but it doesn't do anything with the old commits. Somebody can still go look at our archaeology lesson and find out how to do archaeology in Git and, and fish out this password or the sensitive information. So in this case, if something really bad was committed, you have no other choice than doing a reset. Then we have to go in and really delete commits. Mm -hmm. But this shouldn't scare us either, because then tomorrow we will learn how to do code review. We will not be alone. Somebody else will look at my changes. And then also to somebody else can help me avoiding these kind of mistakes. Yeah. Should we take one more question or go into the break? Um, mm. This one is nice also. All of them are nice, but the question yeah. 80. So if branch doesn't take any space, how does it behave in the memory? If it is not in a physical copy, then how it is done? So in on the hard drive, a branch is is a file, and it all there is. It has forty characters in it, and all it does it points to a commit, and there is not more than this. So it has the cost of one file, and if you are curious about this, so for those of you who are really comfortable with Git and want to go a little bit into the rabbit hole, we have an episode here, Git under the hood. You can have a look at it. We will not do that together, but there you can experiment with this and it will give you a really good understanding of what a branch really is. And you will see that it, it is such an incredibly lightweight thing. How about we go into a break? And after the break, we will be hopefully more than two people here. We will, we will try to do a bit of a round table and we will discuss how much Git is necessary. So after the break, we go into keeping it practical, practical advice. So we will be here at, when are we back? Should we be five past, five past the hour? Yeah, sounds good. Um, good. And I've already put in the notes here. Um, Feedback. So begin collecting all of the crazy questions you may have and we can go over them. If there's any instructors or expert helpers or even learners who would like to come onto the stream and ask and interact with us directly, send me a message and you can. And um, 
yeah, the feedback will be added there. So see you soon. And how can people send you a message? Well, on the Code Refinery Zulip chat. Okay, and, but good. remember, if you join, then you'll be posted to YouTube. So I don't recommend you do that. The questions via the notes works very well, but it's an option if you want it. Okay. Have a okay. nice break. See you five minutes past. Sounds good. See you later. Bye. And welcome back, everybody, from the break. Uh, last session for today. Yeah. There will not be an exercise. It will be a discussion. So you can kind of lean back, but still not completely relax, because the ideal ideal participation mode is that you comment and ask. Can we introduce the, the new people here? We didn't. Let's do it. So we are now more than two with us. So Matthias has joined and Jano has joined. Maybe we can say a few words about you. Matthias? Yeah. Hello. My name is Matthias. Uh, I work at CSC Finland and um, also part of Code Refinery for a year or so. Happy to join. Hey, um, I was already here yesterday, but I guess wasn't really all that properly introduced. So I'm Werner and um, I work at Aalto University as a research software engineer. Um, so basically I help researchers with their coding and software development things. Um, so Richard is my boss, basically. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Nice that you are here. Uh, we, we have this episode practical advice, how much it is necessary. We don't now need to read through this episode, uh, but it will be a guiding line. Maybe let's keep it really, let's keep it conversational. Um, so as a starting question to all of us, maybe I can ask, how do you use Git? Do you use Git in the command line or in editor or through the web or through some desktop interface? How do you use Git? And I have some other questions, but I can ask them later. Who should start? Yeah, I, I can start. I I usually use uh, some plugin either in Visual Studio Code or, or Jupyter Lab. And uh, in 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 case of Jupyter Lab, I use the everything that's uh, included in in the Code Refinery Conda environment because that's just convenient for me. I think I'm basically only using it in Visual Studio these days just because it's um, easy to use as a plug into the text editor that I'm using to write the code. Um, but you can also terminal in um, some cases where it's not code that I'm working on necessarily or not just text files. Yeah. And how about you, Richard? As for me, basically in a terminal. So usually I have one editor open and then a terminal and another window by it. And I can arrange all my windows nicely so it works well. And I have, yeah, so writing in one and then running and committing in the other. Do you feel that it's faster that, that way compared to this uh, visual tools? I mean, VS Code and the IDs are probably about as fast. So I haven't changed okay. because, well, I'm used to it and I'm used to how it's all configured and change is hard. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I can, we can discuss this question here. Question 88. How was the learning curve for you when starting with Git? Okay. How did you learn it? And, yeah. and at which point did you decide you had to learn it, and at which point did you feel comfortable with Git? Hmm. Who should answer, or should I start rolling my die to decide who answers first? Yeah, please do. Maybe. That, that makes it fun. Okay, one. Oh, that's me on my screen. Okay, um, so before Git, I was using a different version control system that a friend had basically pointed out and said, okay, so you should use this and I, well, it was called Darks and it's still around, but definitely not very popular. But then at some point I realized, okay, like me doing my own thing 
doesn't help because other people can't use my stuff and I can't use other people's stuff. So I basically sat down and said, I need to do Git. I read some tutorials. I sort of had a good enough background that wasn't that hard and the kind of stuff's interesting to me anyway. Let's see who's next is Matthias. Yeah, I started thinking, I don't, I don't actually remember, uh, <laughs> except it, that it was during my studies and uh, maybe it, it might have been on a course. But then I already used Git for my um, master's thesis code. So, uh, mm -hmm. and, and I think learning curve wise, um, I'm still learning. And I quite soon turned to those visual tools like Visual Studio Code plugin or, or GitHub desktop actually. And uh, for me, that was easier way to, to um, figure out what those branches and, and, and commits and stuff, what, what do they mean? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Who, or should we go to the next question? Mm. Maybe on the next question, or do you have a good question? Otherwise I have some. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, I'll ask. Um, uh, and the question is, okay, now we learned all these many commands and how to create branches and how to inspect history, how to recover. But now where should I start? If I come after the workshop in two weeks, I go back to my normal work. Yeah. What is a good starting point? And many people don't start from zero. It's not that they don't have anything yet. They, they maybe have a script, they have a notebook, they have a, some code and maybe it's on a hard disk. Maybe it's somewhere in the cloud. How would you start them? Yeah. So basically you have an existing project and you want to do stuff. Yes. Yeah. I was just distracted to looking yeah. at the cat. But, oh, uh, oh yes. it's... <laughs> Let's see. So three, Yarno. Um, okay. I'm not sure that I really have a good answer or that I understand the question. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I mean, I guess my answer is just commit everything yeah. and question. then go from there yeah, and then this... keep making new commits every like hour or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like this is question number 88 or no, uh, 88, uh, 89. So I have a okay. project with already 60 scripts in there. I have the feeling it's important for me to keep track of changes. How would you recommend I incorporate Git in this already big project? Well, okay, I, yeah, I mean, that is, I guess, that is my recommendation. Just take the project as a whole, commit everything. Um, unless there's already a really clear structure to it, like if you have scripts that do a, a thing in one folder and other set of scripts that does a different thing um, that are kind of clearly separate, that you want to keep separate, then you might want to add those in different repositories. Yeah, so create two repositories so can, instead of one or multiple. But um, so at least so we would really just commit everything and go from there. Yeah. So so about that, if if you have a folder full of code, then you do a git init there. Mm -hmm. uh, does it automatically start to track everything that's there? Uh, it does not. And actually, yeah, maybe okay. to elaborate, I'd say I'd run git init, then git status, and it says, hey, there's all this stuff that's not tracked. And then I yeah. add what I know I need and run git status again, see what's left. If I know I need it, I add it. If I don't need it, I put it in git ignore. And then I and there, keep repeating There this. you can, like, uh, yeah. Yeah, I can either add or ignore everything until git status shows clean. Yeah. And yeah, so okay, there you can it. also like do commits that add, add these things that relate to each other, add those, do a commit, and, and then mm. these things relate to each other, add those commits. So yeah. then you can sort of emulate that, okay, I kind of were starting from scratch, but I had this, but it, it's a somewhat meaningful commits give a nice mm. head start to, to your rep new repository. Yeah. I mean, I think it's okay. Well, I mean, whatever is easiest for you. I mean, 
problem if, if the project already exists so the less time you spend importing everything the better i'd say on uh, other questions actually one thing i wanted to say to that question um about how i learned to use git or kind of that reminded me that this is well anyway um so basically we've seen a lot of commands and we've learned a lot of of git usage but for the first 10 years of me using git i was only using git commit all mm -hmm. and git push pull that's mm -hmm. it yeah. um and i think that was a I, that that was a pretty good approach. i mean at least it saved me a lot of trouble because i had yeah. like i had the version history and so on so um yeah, I think and then after better 10 than... years or so, I took a course that went through all the, like, what you can do with Git, and that was then, like, actually useful at that point. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so, I, I mean, doing it on that level is, is already very useful. Should we look at There's... the question? Uh, go ahead, Matthias. Yeah, 91, you were saying, right? Mm. I think 91 is quite in interesting. I would say just push, basically push everything except if there's some uh, secrets like API keys mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or any any sensitive information, leave that out. Or then those system files like uh, uh, Mac OS does in every folder, this DS file. So ignore those. And there are good, good like uh, templates for uh, different uh, coding languages on what to add into Git, Git ignore. But like otherwise, content-wise, why not push everything? So if you're using a compiled language, then you would also not add um, object files or .o files or, or libraries and so on. So yeah, um, only the code basically. And well, read me files and then, yeah. But not things generated automatically from the code. Yeah. Yeah. And another thing is really big files or large numbers of even slightly smaller files. Like if you have two gigabytes of images, that doesn't really work nicely with Git. So uh, data often needs to be stored separately. Maybe this relates to this, uh, why not track binary files, 93. Mm -hmm. Well, they tend to be big and yeah. Git doesn't work that well with big files. There is a um, Git large file yeah. um, thing. Did we yeah. cover it now? But also because it is automatically generated from your code and most people would need to regenerate them because they are running on a different system, the different kernel or um, different libraries um, in the system. So um, they would need to regenerate them anyway. Mm -hmm. You can, I, if you know what that you want to do it, then you, of course you can. I have an example for binary files. So for example, there's a repository called Code Refinery Artwork and it has some logo stuff, it has some like the short videos of the animated logo, stuff like that. It's not really for text, but for basically these things. But we have it there because what's the other option? Google Drive or something that can't really be tracked. And it's so small that it doesn't really matter. So it's a case of practicality beats purity, for sure. What would you say about that? I mean, small image files that you would, for example, um, use with a website, like those mm -hmm. work fine with Git. It will, like a change in the image file will probably be a change yeah. um, in that change will be the entire file, but that's fine. If it's small enough, it's fine. Yeah. Okay, let's see. How do you go about finding the right commands? There is so overwhelmed by so many things. And yeah, I mean. There's ChatGPT already mentioned. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Anyway, I that's, mean, that's also partly why I worked on this cheat sheet I've been showing here, because so many places you refer, there's like, okay, these are all the things you can do. But most people don't need to do all these things. They need to do a few things over and over again. And, you know, then when you need to do something advanced, you say, how do I change a file I just committed? And there'll be some stack overflow question that says what to do. And I'll still do that for complex things just because it's not worth remembering. I mean, do a search you find. Yeah. So, and uh, like ChatGPT versus Stack Overflow, it's uh, uh, ChatGPT gives you like even more condensed answers compared to some long discussion in Stack Overflow. But, uh, and usually with coding, it's my experience is that it's okay. Uh, I mean, ChatGPT, but then it's always with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. So, test I mean, that your the results you get actually do what you want to do the one important thing is that all the information is two years old and it doesn't change very quickly but some programs do change quickly mm -hmm. and can we say ask people i mean there's just so much about all these computer tools and for most of us it's not our main job it's something we use to do some other job so you know focus on what you're good at and let someone else focus on what they're good at and what they're interested in and then work together. And that's what that's kind of also what I was going to say to this question is that like mainly just don't do complicated things. Just use <laughs> just add everything, commit, yeah. push, and pull the changes from other people. Um that's if you're doing something collaborative, you need to use pull requests and so on. We'll do some of that as well um so there, there are a few things that you probably will want to be able to do but anything more complicated i'm i mean depending on what your job is it may or may not be a thing you want to learn um so yeah and, and these course materials are a great resource as well can i give you more tips in this context one is i thought it would be really cool if we uh, like for one day sit next to richard or sit next sit next to me see let's see how other people work ask them also questions in the same context what we what we maybe forgot to say it's a recent idea if we go back to the workshop and back to the schedule it's something we didn't advertise yet so much and it will be an experiment after the workshop so we are here now day two next week we have day four five six something we will try now and if you have time and if you're interested we, we don't know how this will work but we will try to offer two optional bring your own code session and bring your questions. And we will meet in, I guess, Zoom and discuss and help out and ask. But I really like the idea of asking people, working together, look somebody else over the shoulder, how do they work? I learn a lot by seeing other people type and discovering new ways of doing things. Okay, but yeah, definitely. I think that's a, that's useful. And uh, now I remember that there was this comment earlier that it's easy, not easy for a beginner to get a part of, of uh, some big project. And uh, just occurred to me that there's uh, quite many big repositories that are uh, could be quite easily accessible uh, to collaborate with i mean basically all code refinery repositories right mm -hmm. exactly everything that we do is in on github and we will then tomorrow learn how how to collaborate on this how to make changes to it if you have the possibility to work together with somebody but not everybody has the possibility some of us are a little bit isolated in our research group, everybody else does something different. And then it can be a little bit more difficult. Yeah. But we are really happy to take in contributions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. I, maybe I can comment on question number 
94 and related. What are good plugins for Git? And maybe not so much even about uh, what I want to hint at is that it's good to invest some time to create a good environment for yourself. So make it easier if you work in your favorite editor. Look at what plugins are available. How can how can I make the work easier? We start here in the command line because we wanted to give you a really good understanding of what what do the commands really do. But once you have this understanding, maybe you don't want to type it out in a terminal. Maybe you want to do it directly in an editor. So have a look what is available. Also, it can be I think it's a good investment of time to learn your editor really well so that you can do things faster, spend less time in typing and more in thinking. Yeah, that also answers the, kind of the question that which editor should I use or which editor is better? It's, it's not that important which is better. It's mm -hmm. more important that you know one mm -hmm. good enough or well enough. Yeah. Have we answered question 85 yet? How do I push changes following a reset to the remote? Yes, that one. Yeah, who wants to say something there? So, any offers, or I can. So, I, mean, so I admit that I wrote the answer here, and I'm uh -huh. happy to explain what I wrote here. So, if I understand the question correctly, it means that somebody used Git reset, which changes history probably then try to push this new new history and then probably you saw an error and Git tells you that wait a second you on the remote there are some commits you don't have them locally because you changed the history and it prevents you from pushing maybe that happened maybe something else happened but i think this probably happened and if in this case it's a good thing that it didn't work because we have also emphasized that yesterday that Git will not let you accidentally remove your own work or remove somebody else's work. So it will stop there and warn you that by pushing this new history, which changed, I would, I would also lose the commits on the, on the remote, mm -hmm. but you can override it. So there is, yeah. there is this uh, option to push with force. You can force push. It's good to know it exists. It is powerful. It is dangerous. It can be okay or not okay to use. It's, yeah. But it's good to know that uh, this option exists. Yeah. And I guess I'd say like philosophically, if it's something that only you work on and you push, okay, whatever. If it's a big project and you push it and someone else pulls it and then you push a change that's changing the actual history, you get a big chaos there. So what people usually say is once you push, don't change it anymore. And I'd elaborate that don't change it after you push if you think anyone else would be using it. Good so, advice. yeah. I have scrolled down here to, to the feedback. So please give us feedback. Tell us what, please tell us what was good today. The one thing that was maybe the best part of today. Yeah. Tell us also the one thing that we should improve. We really want to hear. And here we also have an election of who should be the workshop mascot. So <laughs> currently the cat is in, uh, in the lead. Yeah. So my idea is with this mascot, I thought, okay, imagine if we had a laptop sticker or something for each code refinery workshop with its own mascot and date and something that people can collect. But I mean, of course, the problem is we can't distribute such a things, but Maybe if we make it, someone can find some clever ideas for it. I mean, like mission insignia. So yeah, something like mission. that. So then, okay. Mm -hmm. That sounds okay. fun. And I'm so happy to see feedback flowing in. This is great. Yes. 
Bye -bye. So I didn't want to cut the discussion short, so if we have still yeah. some interesting questions to talk, let's raise them. Yeah, I guess, I mean, now it's the end time, so if you need to leave, we won't feel bad. We can keep discussing questions as they come in. The answers would be in the notes on the website and in the videos, and maybe after the discussion, we can do the Git bisect exercise and put it on YouTube. Does that sound good? That sounds fine. Tomorrow, we will spend a lot of time on GitHub. Make sure that you can push to GitHub. So either SSH or HTTPS, make sure one of the two works. Mm -hmm. All of these requests for somebody who wants to join the exercise repository, I will process them after the workshop. So they are not forgotten. You will hear from, yeah. you will get some emails from me. Yeah. We really can't say how important it is to make sure that the GitHub connection is set up by tomorrow. Otherwise, you can't do anything then. Okay. But for the official part, maybe let's say thanks for today. Thanks for all the questions and for participating. Also, thanks to all the volunteers and mm -hmm. helpers and organizers behind the scenes. Yes, you all yeah, were a very thanks. good audience. Okay. So, with that said, the difference between merge and rebase, and why would I use one or the other? Question 99. Yeah, rebase. If you want, if you want a linear history, if you want a history that looks like you created the one thing after the other, then it's rebase. If you want to, if you either if you don't mind, or if you want to communicate that things have been developed parallel and at some point they recombined, then you want to merge. Yeah. Then there is the interactive rebase, which at some somewhere I already mentioned it in an answer and the interactive rebase it's really a fun tool where you can edit commits delete commits reorder them squash them it's a very powerful tool to change history so a merge modi doesn't modify the, the past history a rebase can modify the past history I'll admit I'm a heavy user of rebases locally when pooling stuff and so on, but I wouldn't recommend us talking about it in a course like this. So, I think, um, yeah, it is a question of preference. Yeah. And I don't think it really affects that much in the end. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, let's just. Say, if you're interested, you can find tutorials about what it does online, but only if you're interested. So Yeah, and don't... we even have a lesson. I will, I will post a link to it, mm. which we, we don't teach it, but we have material I will post. Yeah. But I'd really say don't let, um, what's it called? Don't let rebase get in the way of solving your problems right now. Okay. Um, I think we've answered most of them. Please write if there's something really important we're missing. Should we go to the bisect exercise? Oh, uh, yes, we can do that. I should actually run into a different meeting, but I oh. can Well, I can stay and do it with Matthias or Yarno, so. Mm -hmm. Should we do that and you can say goodbye here? Yeah. Okay. So, but I will see you all later. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye.